Hey everybody, it's Daniel and welcome to Madrid. Today we're going to do a touristic video. I'm going to show you five places to see in Madrid. If you live in Madrid, you've been to these places. If you're just visiting for a few days, you uh, would enjoy seeing them. And that's about it. This is Calle Fuencarral in the center. Um, basically, Calle Fuencarral goes from Gran Vía up to Glorieta de Bilbao. It's a shopping street. It's a nice shopping street with a lot of the uh, important fashion brands that have shops here. And on the side streets, you also have a lot of bars, cafes, smaller boutique shops. It's a nice place where all the cool kids go to go shopping. Of course, it's a uh, Friday morning here, and it's a little bit quiet because life, you know, shopping doesn't usually happen uh, early here in Madrid. And I don't know, it might rain. If it rains, we'll continue making the video, because who cares? I've got a hood. Anyway, so our first place for the day is Calle Fuencarral. And I'll see you in a minute on Gran Vía. Okay, so Gran Vía is noisy. That's one adjective I would use to describe it. Um, Gran Vía is like Madrid's main street. It's got even bigger shops than Calle Fuencarral. And if I understand correctly, it was built in the 1920s or so. They were trying to um, create a large, you know, main avenue like other European capitals had. They wanted to be more like, you know, Paris. I guess you could compare it to Oxford Street in London, except that Madrid is much smaller than London, so Gran Vía is a lot smaller than Oxford Street in the end. Madrid is a big city, but it's not big on London's scale. Anyway, there's a lot of monumental sort of architecture here. Lots of big buildings, the Telefonica building, which we will see in a minute, and uh, Plaza Callao, which we'll also see. Okay, Plaza Callao, and it's raining. Um, People have this idea that in Spain it's always sunny and warm, and if you're comparing it to London also, it is, you know, sunny and warm compared to London. But it does still rain here. Uh, in spring and in autumn, it rains quite a bit. So, you know, bring real clothes if you come. Don't just think you can get by on a pair of, you know, shorts and flip-flops because it's Spain. It does rain here. Anyway, this is Plaza de Callao. Let's see, Plaza de Callao. Ooh, yeah. Documentary style here. Um, They're trying to sell this a couple of years ago as the Spanish Times Square or the Madrid Times Square. And whatever. If you have to compare one part of Madrid with Times Square, this would be a good one because it has, you know, lights and cinemas and things like that. Otherwise, you know, I would say that. Making a New York Madrid comparison is also not quite accurate because there are so many differences between Madrid and New York. But hey, you know, you gotta compare something to New York, so Madrid is like the New York of Spain or whatever. Um, so we're gonna walk on to Plata España and I'll catch you there. Okay, so Plaza España, here we are in beautiful Plaza España. This is one of the large squares here in the center of Madrid. It's got a couple of monumental buildings. Behind me you can see Edificio España, which is um, maybe the second skyscraper that they built in Madrid. After they built the Telefonica building, this is the number two. And it was the tallest building in Spain, I believe, during the 1950s. The other one that we have is Torre Madrid, which is a bit taller. There are these kind of old school, you know, skyscraper styles, which is interesting also. Edificio España 
the big one behind me is abandoned now, actually. I've been hearing for years that some big company has plans to invest a lot of money and turn it into a hotel or something. But of course, this is Spain and the government makes that kind of thing very difficult. The government, well, you know, Spain is not the best country for doing business. Ask me how I know. It is, however, probably the best country in the world to live, um, which is the big contradiction that everybody here is just kind of walking around with no money, but very happy to be in Spain because it beats so many other places. Anyway, that's something you won't hear on uh, Rick Steves when he comes to, to Spain. He probably will not tell you about government corruption or the fact that they just make it impossible to invest money even in useful projects that would make the country and the city better. But hey, I'm not Rick Steves, so that's what we're talking about. Anyway, this square has a lot of other uh, interesting things around it. There are some original version cinemas over here, if you're looking. Uh, kind of Google Cines Plaza España or something like that, and you'll find original version cinemas over here. And we also have behind me now the statue of Don Quixote. Don Quixote, of course, one of the most famous works of literature in the history of the world, and it was written by Miguel de Cervantes, a Spanish guy from Alcalá de Henares. He also lived here in Madrid. The story is about a gentleman who reads too many books, goes crazy, and starts to believe that he is a knight, of course. I have actually read the book. Most people haven't, you know, people will talk about it, but virtually nobody has actually read the book. It's really thick. Anyway, we have the statue of Don Quixote, Sancho Panza, and on top we have also Cervantes, the uh, author of the book. And yeah, this is a place that you should definitely visit if you're here in Madrid. And there are, you know, always bars and restaurants around. If you're here, you can have a drink at any number of places around the plaza before you walk on to Templo de Boda is our next stop. Okay, so this is Templo de de Boda. If I have the story correct, uh, it was a gift from Egypt to Spain because Spain helped to build the Suez Canal. So it's an Egyptian temple, but it's actually in the Greek style. And it was brought here in the 1970s because the area that was going to be flooded by the construction of the Suez Canal, you know, contained some of these temples. So they just moved this one here because it's better than uh, just having it underwater. So it's a small museum. You can go inside, I guess, now. There are people standing in line here. It was closed for several months, but I think they've reopened it. In any case, the uh, nicest thing about it is just the park and the views. It's a great place to see the sunset if you're into that on days with sun, obviously. That would be a little bit easier. And uh, it's just kind of a hill very close to Plata España where you can uh, see some views of the royal palace and other things. Anyway, it's a pretty nice place. I recommend you come here when you're in Madrid. Another thing I should mention about this area is that it's uh, got a lot of history. It's where the French garrison was stationed during the Napoleonic uh, occupation of Spain. I'm not a historian. My understanding is that, you know, Napoleon was here for a few years during his conquering Europe phase, and that this is where the soldiers would, um, you know, stay when they're occupying the city. The history is, well, there's a couple of big paintings, huge paintings by Goya in the Prado Museum. Uh, one of them is the 2nd of May, which is about the uprising that happened here in Madrid, kind of a revolution against the French occupation. Um, and the, the next one is the 3rd of May, which is people getting executed on this hill. It's the people who were, you know, disloyal to France or who were involved in the uprising. They brought them here, they shot them, you know, etc. So there's a sign here saying that this is where originally the, uh, the barracks or the garrison was. 
And that's about it. Most people don't know a lot of details about these stories these days. I, mean, I certainly don't. But it is one of those things that they talk about. A lot of the, the street names, the holidays are related to this. The uh, most important day, the day for the Madrid community, the holiday, is the 2nd of May in honor of this uprising against the French. And, you know, a couple of the neighborhoods and streets and metro stops are named after people who took place in this uprising. But today, if you hear, you know, General Velarde or whatever, most people do not immediately know that he was involved in this uprising. So anyway, a little bit of history here around the Egyptian temple. We're going to see some of the views, and then we're going to go to our last stop of the day, the Royal Palace. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so we're here in Jardines de Sabatini, one of the gardens outside the Royal Palace. It has started raining again, which means that, you know, the light is not as nice as it would usually be. Madrid is a place with some very beautiful weather, some very beautiful light. Sometimes. I'm sure later today we'll have sun again and it will be awesome. But hey, we're keeping it real here. So it's raining and we're just gonna keep filming. The Royal Palace is right over here and uh, it's a pretty large building. I'll just kind of take you around the outside of it. I guess we'll see the cathedral also because it's right next door and that is a nice place to see also. And hey, I guess that means this will be seven places you should see in Madrid, not five as I had originally planned. But why not? Uh, so reality style here. I'm just gonna continue walking. This garden is pretty nice and the palace also. See you in a minute. All right, so here we are outside the Royal Palace. The Royal Palace is one of the nicest places in Madrid. Well, this square outside the Royal Palace. I'm sure that, you know, living in the Royal Palace would be pretty nice too, but I'm not sure that anybody lives in the Royal Palace now. The, uh, King does use it for some official state functions, but generally he lives outside the city in El Pardo, I believe. Kind of, you know, just a natural area outside the city where they have some important sort of palaces. Anyway, our current king is Felipe the Sixth, Felipe Sexto. If you're watching this, Felipe, you know, tell Leticia I said hi. Um, <laughs> The royal family here is not particularly controversial. I think most people are in favor of having a royal family. I'm sure somebody is going to comment and say that I'm totally wrong about that. But you know, generally, uh, I think it's not a huge issue. Anyway, people don't talk about it that much because it's just kind of a delicate subject. The previous king abdicated about three years ago, uh, Juan Carlos I, Juan Carlos I, and I just found a blog post that I wrote, you know, five years ago or something, where I predicted that this would never happen. People were talking about it like the king was involved in some corruption scandals and the previous king, of course, some corruption scandals. I don't really know the story. It's so boring um, to read about these corruption things because they take five years and everybody just denies knowing everything and in the end nothing happens. But anyway, the king was involved in some corruption scandals. People were saying he should abdicate. And I said, no, never. That will never happen. I was wrong. He abdicated. And uh, in favor of his son. His son has a couple of important advantages. He's younger, he's handsomer, you know. He married a woman who's not any sort of royalty. She's like a journalist, I guess. Now she's the queen. And, um, well, the new king is not directly linked to fascism in any specific way, so that's a positive thing, too. Spain had a fascist dictatorship for about 40 years. That's another long story, which I will maybe tell someday, but not in this video. Um, 
the previous king also had a problem, kind of a media scandal, because it turns out that he broke his hip while he was on safari in Africa with his mistress and shooting elephants, which doesn't look good to anybody. I kind of liked him until I found out that he shoots elephants for fun. Anyway, that's uh, the royal family and this is the royal palace. It was based on the Bourbon, uh, no, it was based on the Versailles Palace in France, outside of Paris. I think it's a little bit smaller because once again, you know, Spain is not France, but um, yeah, that's the palace. And the Bourbon family is the monarchy. Anyway, next and final stop is the cathedral. See you there in just a minute. Okay, so Almudena Cathedral, official motto, not the most beautiful cathedral in Europe. Um, it's a newer cathedral, and so it's kind of in this modern style that's just kind of minimal. It's nothing like some of the other cathedrals around Spain. Spain has a ton of really nice cathedrals. Um, you know, the one in Salamanca, the one in, well, basically everywhere. Leon has a huge one, and basically every city I've been in has a huge cathedral, and they're all pretty cool. Madrid's is not the best. But hey, who am I to say anything about anybody? Because this is my hairstyle for this rainy Friday morning. Um, it has stopped raining. The sun is coming out, which means Madrid is once again the most beautiful city in the world. Um, I don't know. I could go in the cathedral, but I don't think I'm going to because it's just so nice out here when the sun comes out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure. If you are in Madrid at some point, say hi. You know, tell me. Maybe we can hang out. Um, you can buy me a beer. It'll be awesome. Anyway, I've got lots more about Madrid on expatmadrid.com. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. Go to my website, read about Madrid, see some of my nice pictures of beautiful places around here. Enjoy life. Until next time, Daniel, I'm out.